Hello, my name is Christine Reynolds and today I am going to be doing my first ever video tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how I colored this beautiful jumbo poppy using Spectrum Noir markers. To begin with, for today's project, I use Stampendous Jumbo Poppy and I stamped that on Crafter's Companion Ultra Smooth cardstock with my Memento Tuxedo Black dye ink. That is my preferred ink when I am coloring with alcohol markers as it's never moved or smeared when I've been coloring. For today's project, I'm going to be, uh, my main three colors are going to be CR3, CR5, and CR7 in my Spectrum Noir pens. To start off, I'm going to be doing one section at a time so that the ink does not have a chance to dry in between colors and it will blend more smoothly. So let's see, I think I'll start with this section and I'm going to use my chisel end because I have a lot of space to color and for this initial layer it doesn't have to be that neat or pretty I just want to get some ink on the the page to start to saturate the paper and that will make it easier when I want to come in and blend later on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this whole section so you can get a feel. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you start dark or start light or start any color you like. I just like to get down that first initial layer and then I like to come in with my darkest color. So I've got CR7 and basically the petals are overlapping here and this flower is great for beginner coloring because it um, has these lines which helps to show you where some of that darker shading would go and if you're like me I'm a little challenged when it comes to figuring that out so I like to use uh, stamps and images that that sort of make it easy to figure out that placement so I'm just putting in some color very quick and easily I'm gonna go over this again so the first round of color doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to get on the paper and then I'm going to come in with my CR5 and same thing I'm just going to barely come up over the edge here of the CR7 just to pick it up a little bit so that it'll start to blend and then I'm gonna come out about two-thirds almost to the end of my flower petal and then I'm going to get my CR3 again and come back over with my smaller nib and color over that again. And I think this is a great example of how the alcohol inks change colors as they dry, which is important to remember because I put this down a minute ago and you can see it's already more pink than this color that I'm putting down now, which has more of an orange or a peachy tone. So you really need to trust that you're using the right color inks when you lay it down or it can freak you out a little bit. I'm going to now come in again with my CR5 and this time I'm going to do a little bit of palette blending and you can use anything you want. I have this cheap little plastic paint tray that I picked up at a local craft store. I'm coloring some CR7 into there and I'm going to take my CR5 and just pick up a little bit on my pen so that when I come in this time you can see it's a, it's a little bit in between CR5 and CR7 and I think that kind of helps to blend out some of the harsher lines and then you can come back out again from there and you can already see how that's blending so much better and again I'm not being super picky about where I lay this ink down I just want to get it on there And now I'm going to come and do the same thing. I'm going to put a little CR5 in my next tray. And I'm going to get my CR3 and pick that up. And just kind of come in through the edges. Now if you look at this, you'll probably still see some lines. 
don't worry about that. Let it dry. The, the ink changes colors and, and a lot of that blending will come into place as the ink dries. Different parts of this petal are uh, moister than other parts at this point. So you just want to leave it alone. If you keep playing with this, trying to get it perfect, while your ink is still wet, you're going to end up blending it all into one color or ending up with some really crazy harsh lines. So at this point, I just leave it alone. Now I'm going to work on this next section. And um, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to come in oops, and add some of this darker along the edge here. And then some CR5 is going to come in. And right since I'm here, it's a small area, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little petal blending. And then finally some CR3. This little CR5. So you just keep playing with it and going back and forth with the colors until you're somewhat happy with the way it looks. I'm going to do one more petal. Uh, maybe a couple more. I'm going to flip it around this way now. And start with my CR3. And since these are smaller petals, I'm going to go ahead and just do all of them at one time here. I wonder if you can hear my dogs barking in the background. They haven't barked all morning until I turned the camera on, of course. Okay, so that's about as big a section as I like to color at one time. So I've got a nice, good, solid base coat of CR3. And again, I'm going to come in with the CR7, and this, pet this uh, flower is great because all the petals are sort of marked with where you want the dark color. And so that's the CR7. And again, I just keep repeating. Now we're going to come in with CR5. Just kind of grab by the edge. CR3. Should have some music or something playing right now. Usually I have the TV on when I'm coloring, but I don't suppose you want to listen to, uh, let's see, the inaugural's on right now. I guess we could listen to the inaugural address together. I'm going to get my CR5 again, and I'm going to pick up a little CR7, and just come back in and in between those two colors, just kind of bring in the, the palette blending. As you can see, it's just a little bit, it's like the perfect color to blend with, and then you can bring it out again. And I'll do that here. And 
here. You can really see how that's starting to blend out. I'm going to do the same thing with my CR3 again. So the thing with um, blending your, your, your flowers or anything that you're working with, you have to be patient and, and be willing to go back over it a few times because as it dries you'll, you'll see different areas that you don't like or that you like. And you can kind of already start to see this other area that we did earlier is um, starting to uh, blend better. I'm going to add just a little bit more to the ends here. It looks like I missed some. And while I've got this flower here, I see that I've made a little mistake here. Well, a little, little tiny bit out of the, the lines. And you've probably seen this before, but it's a great opportunity just for me to remind you that you can use your blender pen, which is your white capped pen in the Spectrum Noir, and just add a little bit of this clear fluid. And I think of this as an eraser, but really what you're doing is you're taking the alcohol, the clear alcohol ink, and you're pushing the red back to where it belongs. You're getting it out of this area. And so I will just do that kind of right up to the line and then let it dry. Don't mess with it. You want to be really careful about not getting it too wet or you'll end up with a big red blur there. But when that dries, that's going to come out of the line. And I have another one over here I see with a little CR5. It's a little lighter. But I'm just going to add a little bit of blender pen and kind of push that back into the flower as well. So you can see those mistakes are bye-bye, which I love. So I could go around and, and do the rest of the flower for you, but uh, that's really just going to be repetitive. You're going to basically go around and, and do the same thing that we've done with these petals all around the entire flower until you've completed it. So now I'm going to show you how I finished the middle of it so that this video does not end up being three hours long. So for the center of my flower, I decided to use GB3, GB5, and CT1. And I'm going to start again, as I like to do, with my lightest color. So I'm going to take the CT1 and go across. And again, you can see, this is why I love the Memento ink, because I can just go across the black and I don't get any smearing. To be honest, if this were a digital image, I would be much more careful about where I was spreading this, because even with the best printers, a lot of times you get a lot of alcohol ink on there and your digital images will smear. Now I'm going to take my GB3, and I'm just going to have just a tiny bit out from the center here all the way around and same thing on the outside and again the great thing about a big flower like this is it does not have to be perfect you just want to get some color on the page and then um, I'm going to take my CT again and just sort of color in between there and help those edges blend. Although I do want a little bit sharper of a line here because I really want that CT1 to kind of pop there in the center with my highlight. And then the GB6 is just for a little touch of darkness. I'm going to just put it right here. You can see that I'm just putting a little dot right around the, the middle edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing along the edge here, just get a little bit of color on there. And I don't really want to blend that out, I just want a little touch of a line to add some, some good dimension. So, you can already tell how that's taking on a, 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 a concave look with that highlight in the center, it really makes it pop out and look rounded, which I think is great. For the, the outer edge of that middle, I'm going to use IG4, IG5, and IG7. And I'm going to start with the IG7 this time, just for fun. Because as I told you, it doesn't matter if you start light or start dark. Either way will be fine. And I am going to color over the lines just to darken them a little bit. And help make that yellow pop. Just that already added a lot. And then I'm really just going over the, the dark that's already there from the stamp, but I can darken it up and really make it stand out 
a little more with the IG7. And you may be wondering why I'm not just using black for this. And, and um, most of you might already know that, I don't know, I use black for very few things. There's really not too many colors out there where the black is truly black, although our pens are. Um, really, most black are various versions of, of darker grays, and, and it just depends on the pigment and how dark or light they are. So most things that are black, I will color with um, one of the gray lines. Um, depending on if it's got a little brown in it, I might use the BG markers. I use the IGs a lot for black. So now I'm going to come to the outer edge and just kind of scribble on a little outline. And I'm still using the IG7 for this. Getting impatient. Okay, so I've got that around both edges of the circle. I'm going to come in with um, the IG4 now, just because. And I'm just going to color in this whole area. And then I will take the IG5 and just kind of come out to help blend the IG7 in with the IG4. Just come right around that edge. And I'm going to do the same thing. On the inside. I'm going to take my IG4 just one more time. I've got some spots here that look like I didn't quite hit them. Okay. So while I've been doing that, you can see that a lot of that petal has now dried that I've done. And you can see how those colors change, and now it's really pretty beautifully blended. And um, so you would just continue to go around and finish all of the petals until you end up with this. And this is one that I've completed and it's fully dried and you can see how beautiful those highlights look and um, it, it's really colors up quite beautifully. And I used, you know, three markers on, on each color section there. And then when you're done, you can cut out the flower and make a card. And here's the card that I made. So there you are. That is my very first video tutorial showing you how to color the Stampendous Jumbo Poppy with the Spectrum Noir pens. And if you have any questions or feedback, I would love to hear it. Thank you so much. I hope I'll be soon. Sorry, I hope I'll be back soon with another video for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.